Hello oh guys, welcome to a new video. This time uh, I want to talk to you about a topic that a lot of you have asked me about. Um, you may have realized that there are not as many videos coming out at the moment and there are multiple reasons for that. I just wanted to be transparent with you and explain to you what happened here. So, um, the first uh, thing I want to talk to you about is just Mythic Plus. Um, a lot of you know, and I'm pretty sure that's the reason why most of you subscribe to me, um, is that I'm playing Feral Druid. Feral Druid is a spec that is a whole lot of fun for me, I love playing it, but in higher Mythic Plus it's nearly impossible for me to get invited. That started at the 15-16 range but even now where I'm doing 18s, 19s, uh, 20s uh, it's impossible for me to get invited into like 99% of the groups. If there's a guild group pushing keys and they need another DPS I can usually join them without any problems but as soon as I'm trying to pug any keys yeah I can just uh, yeah realize that I won't get invited and log onto another char. That's pretty annoying because my Feral Druid is my main character and I'd love to play high keys on it. And it's not even restricted by the dungeons themselves, um, that they are just too Feral unfriendly or something like that. No, it's just a um, mixture of community perception of the Feral Druid spec and also um, just that there are other specs that perform better in every aspect. Uh, no matter if it's single target, AOE, um, crowd control, utility, there are specs that just offer more of every single thing there. Another reason is corruption. As you can see here, my Twilight Devastation Beam is devastating the mobs, just what it uh, should do when you go by the name. And yeah, that's a fun um, thing that happens and I enjoy it uh, when it happens. It pops up a lot of high numbers, it's just a great feel here once again, you can see my DPS pops up. But the impact that the corruption system has on your character's DPS output is far too strong in my opinion. You can see um, at the end of a dungeon you will see my damage meter. I'm not sure if I'll show it, but I can just spoil it for you now. My top damage source wasn't any of my uh, class specific spells or something like that. It was just my Twilight Devastation uh, ripping these uh, enemy trash mobs. It's not even the best corruption to run on a Feral since our AOE damage is high enough as it is and you want to focus on a single target but since I don't have any good single target corruptions I'm basically forced to run this Twilight Devastation completely over capping if you want to say it like that uh, on my AOE DPS and sacrificing a whole lot of single target DPS which is just sad but uh, since there is only a limited amount of content where you can get corruption reliably um, it is yeah pretty unlucky that I don't have those pieces and I can't really do much about it I could farm all these uh, mythic plus dungeons in the hopes that I would get a 465 item with a good corruption but other than that and I might add it's pretty unreasonably unreasonable to do so because it just consumes so much time for so little uh, reward. I have to wait for my Mythic Plus chest once a week and a few vision runs where corruption is guaranteed and I can be lucky to to get a specific piece that would be an upgrade for me. Just to put this into perspective, um, just two weeks ago I got my first infinite stars piece, a corruption that is incredibly strong on some boss fights, uh, especially in raid, not so much in Mythic Plus and I didn't get any good pieces for weeks. Now I got two in a row, but um, for Mythic Plus content, for example, uh, good things would be the Twisted Appendages uh, that cast Mind Flay, or just crit um, 
damage increases or crit chance increases, uh, something like that, and I don't have much of that, which is just really annoying, and I just have to keep on waiting for some point uh, at which it may be dropped. But there could also be the other case where they uh, won't drop all expansion and I'm just um, yeah, unlucky and I will never be able to perform in the top percentile of my spec just because I didn't loot the right items and I can't do anything about it. Okay, another reason I don't enjoy the game as much as I was uh, nearly a few weeks ago is raiding. What do I mean by that? Do I dislike raids? No, not at all. I love raiding. Um, it's a super fun aspect of the game. My main focus on the game, um, especially now since in Mythic Plus I can't really progress any further um, because no groups will invite me. And um, that makes writing my, my top perspective on uh, the game and my top yeah, way I like to spend time in the game. But my guild is currently progressing on Zoth. And that means we have to uh, have 10 immunity classes in our raid roster uh, for the boss tactic to work. There may be another tactic where you don't need 10 immunities, but it's just so unreasonable to play it like that because the immunities make it so much easier to, to deal with the uh, evoke anguish costs um, that yeah, you basically have no other choice than to take 10 characters with immunities with you. So since I don't have the best single target corruptions, I'm not privileged enough to be one of the players that get invited despite not having an immunity and that makes me benched for most of uh, the time. Now you may say yeah that's an, that's a thing you have to accept as a mythic raider and yeah you're right that's totally fine. What annoys me about it is that I couldn't do anything better to change this. I couldn't farm any better gear. I couldn't you know, um, yeah, just play better or something like that. It's not, it's not possible. Even if I play my character perfectly, I can't in get invited to the raid because I can't perform as good as the other players. Once again, thanks to corruptions and due to the boss requiring 10 immunities. That's a thing that makes this bench life uh, a lot harder than it already is. Um, it's just that a boss that requires 10 immunities, that has so strict class restrictions on uh, your roster, is just not well designed. And Zoth is criticized for a lot of things, uh, especially not working correctly in the world first race, and just uh, that the mythic upgrade to the boss fight is just a secret phase where you do all the same things again, despite clicking some orbs, stuff like that. And there's a lot of criticism. Uh, among the raiding scene that um, Zoff isn't well designed but the m most horrible design um, error that they did was requ basically requiring, requiring these 10 immunities. You see I get so mad that I even forget how to talk. Yeah those uh, requirements just force me on the bench in combination with the corruption and I'm basically forced to sit here. Now you might say, hey, you got a lot of time, why don't you just uh, play another character in that time, bring, uh, make it ready for raid or something like that. And that brings me to my next point. Yes, my next point is twinking or playing odds. Um, while they made finally some changes to the essence system where you could get the essences that you unlocked at rank 3 on your main character also available on your alt characters, which was a huge step into the right direction. There is still so much you have to work for to, to get your alt to a playable state that it's so frustrating to, to go that route. I myself uh, leveled and equipped a uh, hunter and a priest 
in the last few weeks because I had a lot of time because university hadn't started yet and I was benched on Zoff, so I had to use that free time for something. And um, yeah, I definitely choose Hunter, uh, chose Hunter because it was a viable choice in nearly any rate uh, in the past. And I wanted to have a character to fall back on when my Feral was benched, like this tier. And um, in fact, most of the times where one of the main raiders couldn't um, be on the Enzov fight, I got invited to the raid. But after a few tries, um, we realized that my druid just couldn't perform in that fight, especially as Moonkin, which I was forced onto. So um, I proposed that I would switch on my hunter, who had a lot less gear at that point and uh, also the cloak on I think rank 9 or something and still I was performing way better on my hunter than I was on my feral druid. Also he had immunity so I could um, switch in for some people who were missing and were providing one of the immunities for the evoke anguish costs or the soaks. So um, I got this hunter ready and now he is close to reaching rank 15 on his cloak, but that was weeks of work once again. I got this character on max level, I got the essences fairly quickly because of the update that we got, but I still had to upgrade the cloak, which took a long time because coalescing visions, as you know, aren't freely farmable, they are restricted as well and they restrict your access to visions on which you depend to upgrade the cloak. And also I'm limited by corruption once again, because I don't have weeks of opening the M plus chest, farming M plus or, and weeks of visions to uh, choose out of a wide array of corruption items. Instead, I'm once again uh, starting without any and have to pray that I loot the right um, corruptions from the few sources of gear that guarantee corruption. I was fairly lucky on my hunter, I want to say. I got uh, two severe pieces, which are by far the best for hunter. And uh, I also got mind flay, stuff like that, or haste proc, it's um, percentage mastery. Those are not the best corruptions, but they are still okay. You can raid with them. I wasn't, of course, performing top notch, but at least I could do something on the character. Now, with my priest, uh, which recently got to level 120, and um, which, yeah, I played a little bit more than the other characters in the last few weeks, um, I realized it was even harder to get to a good point. Not harder content wise because you had to do the same content but just playing it i'm i'm playing my priest as a disc i always did that and i enjoy it really much but when it comes to uh, um, the assaults that you have to do to get the coalescing visions to get the entry to the visions of orgrima or stormwind to get your cloak upgrades you know where i'm going with this um, those are taking a lot more time on my healer than they are take on my under geared healer, I might add, uh, than they do on my DPS packs. And even if you farm those uh, coalescing visions and buy those vessels, get into your vision of Orgrimmar, but especially Stormwind, you are even more fucked if you are playing them solo. I know some of you might say healer is a group spec, you have to spec DPS if you're going solo, but that's not what class design should look like to me. And I think they're fixing a lot of it with Shadowlands. But when I get into the vision, I deal a lot less damage. And even though the mob's HP is scaled down, I need more time to kill the enemies, especially since my area of effect abilities, uh, in this case, Holy Nova, aren't nearly as strong as they are on DPS specs. And second of all, there are just a lot of interruptible costs which I cannot interrupt because I don't have one. Uh, and that means that I lose a lot of sanity that I would otherwise not lose. Um, you might say, yeah, okay, but uh, you got so much sanity left when you got all the upgrades that that shouldn't be a problem. And you are right, it isn't. 
when you got the gear, when you got a high enough rank, when you had the time to farm all those available uh, vessels. It's just not reasonable to do that on so many characters as I'm playing now. I know there are top raiders that are preparing multiple characters for the new raiders and stuff like that and they're playing a lot of different characters and spending a lot of time. Um, but for someone like me who enjoys playing this game but still does it on a yeah fairly casual basis which means that I'm logging in every day which is maybe only playing one or two hours instead of eight like some other people um, it's just not reasonable to get both characters ready to do meaningful content in a yeah, normal time you have to take a lot of time to prepare those characters and it does feel more like a chore than actually playing your character when you're just grinding out world quests, killing rare, searching for rares for hours in, in those assaults, and then spend your time in visions where you need, if you want to take everything with you, about half an hour to do to complete one vision. And yeah, it's just not fun anymore. So I'm often playing other games at the moment, that's why I didn't upload for so long. I will leave you with this video. I'll let you see the rest of his dungeon. It was only a 16 done with a puck on a Tuesday night just to get a weekly key for my character because I realized I hadn't gotten any keys this week. So it isn't the best performance, neither by them nor by me, but at least it's something. I hope you enjoyed this view on the game and um, that you yeah, maybe can understand why I'm not putting out so much content at the moment. But I will promise you as soon as Shadowlands uh, hits and I may be invited to the better or something like that or yeah, if everything goes wrong as soon as uh, the Shadowlands uh, launch officially there will be a lot of content from me. I will put in all these videos as fast as possible with as much quality as possible because I'm really hyped for it so far. And that doesn't mean that there won't be any videos coming in the next time or the nearest future, but it will be a lot less than it was maybe a few months ago where I was playing the game a lot more. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, thank you guys for understanding, and see you soon.